you join me on this moderately sunny day in November 2022. It doesn't happen very often, so I'm just going to quickly do a video on this project that I've been building since August uh, with my family. Um, so we're going to go through why I chose to build a solar pergola, also why I chose to put solar panels on the garage roof rather than opt in for the house roof. Additionally, I'm going to go through the bill of materials and where they sourced. And uh, I know a lot of people have asked in my other videos about that. I'm obviously going to put a link to the other videos up here. So uh, I hope you enjoy watching. Please subscribe if you do enjoy this video. And you are watching the BMC. So this whole process started back at the beginning of July. The idea was to create a simple solar system that would allow me to be as off-grid as possible as well as bringing the costs down to a considerable level. But I also wanted to incorporate a pergola design that I have additional roof space to be able to put these panels, meaning I could buy a solid structure in a pergola rather than spending money renting scaffolding to put it on the main house. This in turn leaves me with the ability to put more panels on the house roof in the future if I so need but based on what I've got so far, I don't think I will for a very long time. Initially, I looked at getting a bespoke or off-the-shelf solar product uh, that was in the shape of a pergola. Unfortunately, these seem to be rather expensive, um, so that idea was quickly kiboshed, and I started looking at doing my own. Also, of the four or five vendors I reached out to in terms of getting a pergola that's similar to what I ended up with, uh, one of them actually gave me a price, but that was, once again, within the five, six thousand pound mark. And then as you can see from these emails, the other ones wouldn't even do it unless I was making either a bulk order or they were unable to do it because of the amount of work they had on. So using floorplanner.com, which I already had set up for before I moved into the house to measure furniture, uh, I was looking at initially doing a northern and southern facing solar set on the garage roof. Um, this program actually allowed me and showed me that the shadow cast from the tree out the front garden actually would be a bit of an issue. I didn't really like the idea of cutting down a whole tree to be able to put panels up. Uh, so this was my initial thoughts and I decided against it. I then started using opensolar.com, something that I highly recommend if you are doing a solar project. It can measure out where certain dimensions are based on satellite imagery, but obviously you can go and put in your own measurements as you can see here. So what I worked out is roughly my garage roof and also the amount of space I had for a pergola. As you can see, it was around 3.6 meters, which was perfect angle. So something else that uh, OpenSolar allows you to do is select the individual panels that you need, the exact model that are available on the market. If it's available online, it should be in this tool. As you can see here, I've opted for certain batteries, certain panels, and uh, obviously the costs and stuff here are just uh, random costs I put in before I built the project. What you can see is the maximum uh, watt peak output for the panels there is as well. Additionally, you can see on the slider, it will give you an estimation of your output throughout the year, depending on the month. Uh, you can also change azimuth, AKA where the panels are facing and the tilt. So now that I had a rough idea of plan and also size, I started scouring the net for a cheap pergola. And lo and behold, I did. I found this 3.6 meter by 3.6 meter box pergola from Rutland County Garden Furniture. Uh, it was on offer, so I actually got it cheaper than what you're seeing on screen. And uh, it came with all the bits I needed. It came with the slats in the right position, and obviously you can move them. And yeah, this fit the bill. So I went ahead and bought my first part of the project back in July. Three weeks later. Hello, so it's the 3rd of August, and uh, just making a start on the pergola. So it's arrived. Just put it together now. 
and um, yeah, it's eventually going to go over here, just behind the garage. So uh, I thought I'd make a little video blog on putting it together. Uh, not so much putting it together, but before and after, and what I plan to do with it. So uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so we're several uh, weeks later, and uh, the goal is now up, so we can uh, start looking at buying the solar panels for it. And uh, yeah, we'll go on to the next stage, and hopefully uh, it will get sorted. It's during this time I did my research into bifacial versus monofacial panels or white back panels, which are the normal solar panels you put on a roof. The uh, on-screen uh, image depicts what it is that you get as benefit. So um, any bounce light would obviously be captured underneath the panel. Aesthetically, it's also more pleasing, as you can see in these images, you get a little bit of light through. So if you sat underneath the pergola, that's always helpful. And then the unintended uh, advantage as well is the invertible need a bit of power anyway. So with regards to bifacials, they actually perform better in gloomy, cloudy, overcast days. So therefore, um, in sunny old Wales, where there is a lot of cloud, you actually get more power in winter via bifacial panels versus monofacial. And this brings us on to the 11th of November. And as you can see, it's a dreary day outside. Um, I've taken a couple of screenshots, which I'm going to display on the screen now. What you'll be able to see is PV1 is actually the bifacial panels. Remember, there's only three of these, and they are outperforming the um, monofacial panels that are on the garage roof. Remember, there's four of those by a roughly 20 to 30 uh, percent, depending on the conditions at the moment. Um, I've done two different screenshots, one for earlier and one an hour later, and you can see that that gap in terms of wattage is actually quite big. So this is why I went for bifacial panels in the end. So now that I've made my mind up on the bifacial panels, I could go to market, go find measurements for them, figure out if they fit on the pergola, and then I made my mind up on the exact models I wanted, as well as go measure the garage roof so that I could go and buy the monofacial panels that we're going to get on the roof. So these are the ones I decided to get. So we'll kick off with the garage roof panels. I went for four JAM 54S30s, they're 405 watts each peak. Uh, I used roof anchors, uh, which were a pain in the ass to fit, uh, with a universal fitting bar. Um, the universal fitting bar was easy, it's the roof anchor that was a nightmare because I had to lift tiles on the roof to do that. Uh, for the pergola panels, I went for the bifacial JAM 72 D20s, they're 460 watt peak. Um, I'm using side protected vehicle roof fasteners, so what you would get normally on a roof uh, of a vehicle, um, and they are screwed in nice and tight onto the wood. Uh, for the inverter, I was originally going to go for the 3 kilowatt, but I decided against it and went for 3.6 kilowatt. Even though the system in total will only be able to output 2.9 from the solar, um, it's actually going to be able to put out 3.6 kilowatt from the battery uh, for when the solar is not available at night. So that's why I went for the higher system there. Uh, and for the battery, I went for the US 5000 Pylon Tech with a 4.8 kilowatt hour capacity with 4.5 usable, um, obviously doubling that, which should easily cover my daily usage. So the panels I picked were on a shorter lead time. They say you didn't be picking them in the first place. Uh, but something to keep in mind was I didn't have an inverter or batteries at this point. My brother luckily uh, bought a Fox battery storage system and had a spear in solar inverter. So I was able to borrow that for a short period of time. So that's what we did. And uh, we've set out to put the panels on the roof. A few moments later. Good, oh, the rails. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who participated in either putting the pagoda up or the solar panels. Really appreciate your help. This wouldn't have been possible without you. So thank you. Now over the solar pergola, unfortunately we noticed that one of the bifacial panels had a crack on the underside. Uh, unfortunately this set us back a fair bit. Uh, we were able to get another one shipped out pretty much within the same week. Um, but unfortunately the weather wasn't with us. But uh, when it did get replaced, uh, we carried on. Okay, so Saturday the 8th of October. This panel has finally arrived. The other one I had was cracked, so my dad and myself put this up today. So I've got my full array now. 
So we got three 460 watt bifacial panels, and then we've got four 410 watt panels, I believe. And uh, that's the full array. So we just need to do some cable management now. And then the next video will be when it's all done, I believe. So awesome. So as you can see, the cable management's done. You just need to sort the tails solar now, but here's cables go down there, goes across this beam up there. So it's similar on the other side. So there we go, that's the cable management done. Okay, so as promised, this is now the bill of materials. So everything from the smallest screw to the pergola itself were detailed and the associated with cost with it. Okay, so starting off, we have the uh, DC switch. Uh, we have the solar panels, the roof hooks, the module bearings, uh, the end clamps, the galvanized flathead wood screws, all coming from Dynamic Property Maintenance Limited. Um, so they provided all the required items for the build. Um, as you can see, the total cost there is £1,673.97 after VAT. Moving down, we had to order DC cable as a separate order due to stock uh, limitations and the mid clamp because once again, there wasn't enough stock initially. Um, that was 65 pound and 75 pence. Uh, the next line, you will see the bifacial solar panel replacement. So this is due to the other one being cracked. So initially I had to pay for that. Uh, I did later get a refund for that. Um, that was £183.06, including delivery costs. Uh, so the next line is an interesting one because obviously I am basing this bill of materials purely on the solar panels and the pergola. So this is the solar project, not the battery project. Now the Solus Energy Storage 36 kilowatt hybrid inverter that I've bought, obviously it has it in mind for the batteries, specifically the pylon techs. So they will not appear in this list of bill of materials. I'll do a separate video on that. Um, but the associated higher inverter you could have used instead would have been around 400 pound for a Solus 3.6 kilowatt normal um, inverter. Um, yeah. So because it's a hybrid inverter, this costs 1,092 pounds and 68 pence after VAT. Um, whereas a normal just grid tie inverter, inline inverter, um, would have been around £400 after that. <clears throat> so the next line is the terminal rings for earthing the uh, pergola solar panels and the M4 screws and nuts that were needed, uh, M8 bots from B&Q as well, um, so little tiny things that you know as the project developed we needed to buy. Uh, and then some cable ties, earthing rod and a PVC sleeving. Um, and then the pergola itself on the bottom line. So that was £589.99 for the pergola itself. So going to the sum total, we see the total cost of materials being £3,291.14. Total delivery costs was £164.55, partly due to the fact that certain things were out of stock, so we had to order them in separate orders. If it could have all been done at once, it probably would have been close to £100. So the total bill of materials and delivery costs come to a grand total of £3,455.69. That is for a 2.9 kilowatt hour, uh, sorry, kilowatt peak uh, system with a pergola as well. And as you can see, with the money was returned for the broken panel later on down. That is actually already counted in the sum total, the refund, so don't worry about that. So... Um, looking back, obviously the pergolas and stuff I was looking at before, at the very beginning of this video, uh, about 5,000 plus, I think it's done quite well, uh, considering those pergolas didn't include an inverter. Um, I've now got something that I built myself, so obviously a little project that was fun to do for four or five months. Um, and yeah, I think overall, um, you know, the, the system, the solar system uh, works perfectly well. Like I said, I'll do more videos in the future in regards to the uh, battery system and how that's working out. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go into more statistics now shortly. Okay, so here we go. Let's go through the generation of the uh, solar array. So we're going to start off by mentioning that this Gray's inverter, temporary use, and then hybrid inverter, number one setup, and then number two setup. Number two setup you could ignore for now. That's once the battery system and everything else is fully operational. Um, I've had a week using it. 
um, and it's not 100% correct. So they're not put, we're not putting those stats in. So what you can see now is the kilowatt hours generated from uh, the solar array when it was Graham's inverter was 108.8 kilowatt hours uh, and 99 since it's been on the hybrid inverter. And then the dates in service, 21 and 28 respectively. So something that's interesting is obviously you'd expect Graham's inverter because it was earlier on in the year to have generated possibly more. The reason it didn't was because that inverter was a single MPPT. Uh, it was dual um, string, but single MPPT. So the lower voltage from the two panels that I had on the Vagola rather than the three, because remember one was cracked, uh, generated less. And also it would have gone with the lower voltage uh, instead of the dual MPPT that the hybrid inverter has. So it has the best of both worlds. If the sun's high and the garage array is generating more, it'll obviously be able to do the voltage for that separate to the voltage on the Pagola. Next, let's have a look at the generation and the export of power. It's 207.8 kilowatt hours in total. Now, unfortunately, the total export from the 10th of November is 136 kilowatt hours. This means that the complete loss, and I don't get any money, bear in mind that I didn't get this fitted with a, um, generation certificate because obviously I would have required a electrician and et cetera, et cetera for that. And it would have cost, would have gone sky high. Uh, we got the total generation uh, export, sorry, as 65%. So that's 65% of the generation lost. Uh, so this is exactly why the battery storage uh, is very important because that um, what, what would normally be exported would be going into the battery and then the battery would be, hold that charge then later on for the house. As I said, my consumption is very low in terms of electricity, surprisingly. Um, so you've got to keep that in mind that people go in and get in six to seven kilowatt uh, peak arrays. Um, unless you're actually using that much power or you have some sort of battery storage for it, that is generally going to be lost to the grid or sold to the grid if you have some sort of export tariff. Okay, so that concludes the solar part of the project. Um, I'm going to go and do another video in the future in regards to the battery storage and how all that works, what I would have done differently, different costs, and just generally update you on stats if you're interested. Obviously, please leave comments below if you want. Um, please like and please definitely subscribe, especially if you're looking at doing your own project or something like that. Um, obviously, I can put my spreadsheet online, things like that, so people can see and just check the stats if you want. Okay, so uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed watching and I'll catch you again.